Evening, what's up? Yay! Yay for cows. We have I haven't had anybody uh cow with me in a while. SSDD. I hear ya. Projo said she's going to, well, you probably saw, she's going to be a little late because she's got a prior event. And I don't know if, I'm assuming some of our regular, or new, our newer regulars are not newer. Within the past couple months, regulars will probably be here. Okay, let me just click on this. The oh okay. Bunch of that. All right. Okay. So we got a somewhat busy week this week here in the stream. I'll give you, whoever's here, I think there's two people viewing me at the moment, give you the heads up. Normal um, tonight and Thursday and Saturday, the normal usual here on Twitch. You probably saw, if you're in the Discord, you probably saw that tomorrow night at 8 p.m. the same time, in the Discord, there will be a viewing party in the voice channel for a um a video on oh no anyway there'll be a viewing party on the discord about shearing about how they shear sheep and alpaca and then friday yes you did scare me Friday, the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, there's going to be another Discord viewing party, if the first one goes well, and it's going to be videos that we're going to watch about skirting a fleece and scouring a fleece, basically cleaning it up to be prepared for yarn. And then next week on our non-stream nights, we'll watch a couple other videos in the rest of the process of how they make yarn. They're not going to get real technical, but the basics of it. So it'll give you an idea of how um, yarn is. <laughs> okay, Seagam, I don't know how to do that, but that is the first clip I've uh, that I've ever had. Gee, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, the Discord viewing parties this week. And into next week, I think. Well, that's the first one. I've not, I don't think I've ever had another one. Anyway, so again, we're going to do tomorrow night. So that's Wednesday and then Thursday. And then the following week. Then we're going to do Monday and Wednesday. More of the process of how natural fiber yarn mainly from sheep and alpaca is formed. There's slightly different processes if you're use if you're get, making it from cotton or other plant fibers and angora rabbits different, but since I can't sh I don't do all of that, I don't process wool and I don't really spin yarn. I can't show that, and I can't stream a YouTube video here on Twitch. So that's why we're going to have the uh, Discord viewing parties. And again, hey there, Knots and Stitches. How are you? And again, if anybody is going into the Discord viewing party tomorrow night at 8 p.m., I'll give a few minutes for people 
to come on, come in and everything. And if anybody has has difficulty trying to get the video to, to play or whatever, we're all going to basically watch it together at the same time. But there's a thing you have to do. You, you have to click so you can actually watch it. It's really easy. And there's a chat that's in there that we can chat along. I'll help everybody out with that. You enjoy spinning? I've only ever done very little spinning. I'm very, very new at it. I do have a student drop spindle, which I kind of got the idea of it. I'm very rusty with it. And I have two electric spinning wheels. The um, electric eel, I think they're the 1.1 1 .1 or 1 1.2. I got them secondhand. And all I've ever spun, and this sounds weird, but it's economical. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on on fiber, on sheep fiber, and decided I didn't want to actually enjoy it. So I got some cheap, roving-style acrylic yarn, and I played with it, and I got it to, to make it real fine. If I get time, I come and pop in the show tomorrow night, like watching it again. Cool. What's the other one? No, I have two. Two identical of the... Of the EEW Nano, yeah, that electric eel wheels Nano. I got them secondhand, and it was a, a package deal. It was two identical machines. Um, there was two lazy kates, which those of you who don't know what a lazy kate is, we'll get into all of that at the later date. Um, a yarn swift, three D printed yarn swift, a homemade PVC knitting naughty. A bunch, a whole bunch of bobbins for it, and actually a small little bit of blue face, least Lester um, fiber, which I haven't gotten into that yet. So I want to get a little bit more practice before I work with the uh, the sheet fiber. And I haven't messed with the uh, spinning wheels in a while. Let me just check something. Okay. All right, I think we're going to get into tonight's stitch. If anybody's crocheting along, you're going to need two colors. Two colors. You can do more than more than two colors. Technically, you could do this with one color, but it looks better with two colors. It's a pretty easy stitch. There's just one little portion of it that's a little complicated, but when we get to it, I'll walk you through it as usual. So we are doing the bird's foot spike stitch. And every fourth row, fourth, yeah, you're going to do this special little stitch here, and I'll show you how to do it. Everything else is singles. So if you're crocheting along, get your yarn out. I have made a decision, and I think this might be a good decision. For now on, anything I stitch on stream, I'm going to try to use cotton yarn because it tends to hold the stitch definition a little better. You have an electric 6.0, an antique double drive, Saxony style, nice, and a 3D printed wheel a friend helped me build. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm nowhere near the level of getting a Saxony style wheel or th I have 3D printed. Yeah. A, I don't have the space for it. And B... I'm not, I'm very, not even a novice. I'm like, I'm pretty ignorant with a lot of it. Those of you who don't know what a Saxony style spinning wheel, it's the traditional, when you think of a, of a wooden spinning wheel, when you think of, and this is a bad example, when you think of Sleeping Beauty and the spinning wheel, even though that's not accurate, but, um, it kind of looks like that. That's a Saxony style. There's other styles. There are upright styles. Okay. I know a little bit about spinning wheels. I just don't really know everything there is to know about it. All right. So, to do this stitch, it's a repeat of, hey there, Trixie Star, and welcome, and 
feel free to lurk. So the repeat for this is six plus one for the foundation. So you're gonna do multiples of six for your chain, for foundation chain, however long you want it, and then you're gonna do one additional one. So what I'm gonna, this is actually, I'm gonna make a smaller sample. So I'm gonna do 30 chains. Thirty. That's my thirtieth chain, and then one more for thirty-one. So I will. You got the new blackout cake Oreo flavor. I never. I have never heard of that. Is it any good? Seagam is our regular, our resident junk food eater. So if you're crocheting along, let me know when you get your multiple of six plus one. You don't have to do thirty. Whatever your multiple is is fine. You take a little drinky drink. And hopefully this blue is showing up. It's a little bit darker than our normal blue. But I think it will show up. So when you get your multiple of six plus one, what you're going to do is the second chain from the hook, you're going to do a single crochet. And then every chain will get a single crochet. It's a basic single crochet row. So again, for those of you who are new, the loop on the hook does not count as a stitch. We're skipping our first chain, and in our second chain, we're doing a single. And then all the other stitches, all the other chains, get a single. Actually, this is... I haven't used cotton in such a long time. I forgot how uh, easily it can slide sometimes. Again, you don't have to use cotton. You can use whatever fiber you, you choose. I figured I'd use it because you might be able to see the stitches a lot better. You get the very last chain, and there is your row of single crochets. It's all twisted because it's only one row. And usually when I stitch into the chain, it'll twist, and it'll twist even more with the cotton for some reason with me, but you get the gist of it. So I will wait until, I know Claymico, Claymico's already... Dang, girl, she's already ready. If anybody else is crocheting along, again, let me know, and I can go slow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn. Now this is one thing, this part here is a little bit different than normal, slightly different than what you normally would do. So we chain one and turn. We're going to skip the first single crochet. We're going to skip that. And in the following one, we're going to do a single crochet. And then you're going to do a single crochet in every stitch, one single crochet in every stitch. And when you get to the end, you're going to do a single crochet in the turning chain. What I would suggest here is this row count 
your single crochets and make certain that you have that same multiple of six that you had for your foundation chain. Because remember when we did our foundation chain, it was, I did 30, we did our multiple of six and they added one. That adding one was a turning chain for the row we just did. The count is very important with this. So I would recommend as you're stitching, count your stitches that you make them and it should be the same number as your foundation chain minus that one because that was the turning chain. Okay, I've, now I'm doing my 29th stitch, but I need one more. If you can't get into that turn, that very last turning chain, sometimes it can be difficult. In the same stitch as your last stitch, you could do another single crochet. The main thing is you want to have that multiple of six in that row you just did. So that was row two. We're going to do the exact same thing two more times. So we're going to have a total of four rows of single crochet. And again, you're going to chain one and turn, skip the first stitch. So you're going to skip that first one, and then the following one, do your stitch. And again, count to make certain you have the right amount. Twenty-nine, and when you get to the end here, usually on the end of this row, you'll be able to go into that turning chain to do your last stitch, depending on how tight you stitch. So that was row three. You're going to do the exact same thing for row four. When you get to row four, don't do that last stitch yet, because I'm going to show you a little trick. So do all of them except that very last stitch into the turning tra chain of the end of the row. Again, chain one, turn, skip the first stitch, and in the second stitch do a single crochet and a single crochet in every stitch till you get to the end. But don't do one in that turning chain. We will do one, but don't do it right now. I'll show you a little... Not really a trick, but that's where we're going to change colors. But I'm going to show you something. If you're crocheting along now, just as a little test and not actually making something. I didn't know why it didn't dawn on me before, but I'm not going to end up cutting my yarns anymore as I when I make my samples and when I do it on stream because I don't want to end up having tons of knots in my yarns eventually and all these little scrap pieces. So I'm going to show you a little thing if you're just doing a test. This also would work in some stitches. 
you could do this in your final piece, and then if you're going to do a border on it, there's a way to hide it. So, we get to the edge, to the end of our fourth row, and then you're going to do your last stitch into your turning chain. So you're going to put your hook in, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, and this is how we normally change colors. The same thing. We are going to change to our other color. We are not going to cut our blue yarn. Even after we join, we're not cutting the blue yarn. We're going to put on our second color and finish the stitch like you normally would. Tighten up your tail of your second color and the strand cut from your first color. Tighten them up and tighten up your stitch. And now you're going to chain one and turn. The whole time, leave your, sec your first color attached. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to skip the first stitch and in the next stitch we're going to do a single crochet and in the next stitch after that do a single crochet. So we skipped our first and this is row five when we change colors. Skip our first stitch and in the next two stitches we're each doing a single crochet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stop for a bit and I'm going to show you something that you're going to, that's kind of important to do this stitch. And try to lay it out. So, if we look closely at what we have here, so we're going to ignore what we just did there for a second. All of our stitches are all lined up. So you got a hole, a hole, a hole, a hole. So they're all primarily lined up. They're slightly off a little bit, but they're right in a line, perpendicular to each other. They're all on top of each other. We know that they're all horizontally because that's when we make our rows. So it's kind of like a grid. Okay. So keep that in mind. So what we're going to do, and I recommend a stitch marker. I should have mentioned that to everybody and I think that stitch marker is going to break. So let me get a safety pin. I would recommend a stitch marker or an actual safety pin I wouldn't recommend a strand of yarn because you're going to be moving this. What I would suggest is, so we got our two stitches here. We're going to skip the next stitch and in the following stitch. So we got our single, our single, skip one. And in the following one, temporarily put in your stitch marker in that stitch because that we're going to need that exact stitch once we do our bird foot spike. This is where we're going to do our bird's foot spike. So that's just going to let me know where to do it after I'm done the spike. So let me take a little more drinky drink. And get my pointer here. So again, for this row, we've joined our yarn, we skip the stitch, each of the next two stitches get a single, lay our hook down, skip a stitch, and in the next stitch, put a stitch marker of some sort. Now we're going to go back to that stitch that we skipped. So we find that stitch that we skipped, and we're going to go down one row. So here's the one we skipped, down one row, and over two to the right. So down one, one, two to the right. So essentially, it's the one right below that first single crochet. So that right there, again, we're going to find our original stitch, our hole we skipped, down one, and over two. In that, in that space here, you're going to put your hook into that space. Again, down one, over two. Bring up a loop and bring it through your work. And bring up the loop a little bit tall, about the same height 
as your rows here, as your, your stitches. I can go do this over again if you're confused. Again, we've done our two stitches. The next one over, we're going to go down a row and then two to the right. And in that space, in that hole, put your hook, bring up the loop through it, and pull it up a little tall, and leave it on the hook. So we have two loops on the hook. Okay. So now we're going to go back to that stitch that we skipped here. And you're going to go down two, row, two rows. So here's one. That's where we are. One row and then two rows. So here's the stitch. One, two. Go down two rows. Go into that space. So here's the one we're skipping. Down one, down two. You bring it, bring the loop through, bring it up. And you got three loops on the hook. Leave them on the hook. And now, the same thing. This is kind of, oh, drop my pointer. So that same stitch that we skipped, that's here, you're going to go down one and then two stitches to the left. So down one, two to the left, and put your hook into that hole, bring up a loop, and bring them all the way up. And you should have four on the hook. And before I do anything, I'll show you. So you can't really see the one we skipped, which is right here. So the first one we went down one row, two to the right. Insert, bring up a loop. The second one is that same hole, that, the same stitch we're skipping. Go down two, two rows, insert the hook, bring up a loop, leave them on the hook. And then the third one is that same stitch that we're skipping, down one and two to the left. And bring them, once you have all four loops on the hook, yarn over, bring through all four stitches, Hey there, Nora Fairy. Yeah, this is this is a little bit more difficult. So when you do that, underneath where all of this gathers together, there's a stitch we're gonna, that the one stitch that we skipped. But the legs of it are gonna go in that hole, that hole, and that hole. Corner to corner is fun. And then after we have gone through all four. Then that stitch that we put our stitch marker in, because sometimes it can get be hidden by all of our yarn. Put your your hook into that stitch where the stitch marker is. Right, leave the stitch marker in. Put your hook in, and then take your stitch marker out. And now finish the single crochet. So you're gonna you've already put it in. You got your yarn. Bring it up and then finish it. Have I confused everybody yet? And if I went too fast, <laughs> yeah, that's the little confusing part. Yeah, take some time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, if my camera was better and also your stitches, sometimes it can be difficult. So I mean, I understand. Totally understand. So after we've done one, I'll, I'll continue with it the rest of the way. After we've done one single crochet, then we're going to do four more single crochets, each in their own stitch, like normal single crochet. So we have a total of five. Then we're going to stop. We're going to skip the next stitch, and in the following stitch, I'm going to put in my stitch marker because that's going to tell me where to actually do that one. And now we're going to do another bird, bird's foot spike. So again, what? I'm what for your grammar, people? 
Oh, you're correcting your own grammar. <laughs> okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to find the, the stitch here that we skipped. That, that's right here in the next skit, stitch. Go down one row and back two to the right. Put it in. Bring up the strand and bring it up. Now that same stitch here, you're going to count down two rows. Put it in that stitch, bring it up, and now the same thing, that stitch, count on one row and two to the left. And the same thing, bring it up, you got four on your hook, yarn over through all four, you've completed the bird's foot stitch, and now where the stitch marker is, put your hook in, now we can remove our stitch marker. and then finish our single crochet, and then do four more, that was only four, now here's number five, and now we're going to do the same thing, we're going to stop, we're going to put a stitch marker in two stitches over, and then do another bird's foot spike. So again, we've got our stitch here, down one, over two, put our hook in, draw up a loop, go back to the, our stitch, that's our stitch here we're gonna work around or over, down two, two rows down, draw up a loop, and then the same thing, our stitch we're going to work around here, down one and two to the left. Bring up a loop. You can kind of bring it up somewhat high. Yarn over through all four. And then we're going to put our hook in where our stitch marker is. Now we can remove the stitch marker and finish the stitch. And we'll do five in a row. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to do this probably one, probably one more time, I'm thinking. So now we're going to go to our second stitch, put our stitch marker in. And get that in there and do another bird's foot spike. Down one row and back two. Bring up a loop. Down two from that space. Bring up a loop. And then down one and over to the left. It's like a dance move. Okay. And now, after we've gone through all four, put it into the next stitch, the one with our stitch holder. And you probably didn't see that all on camera. We're going to remove our stitch holder and then do five singles. One, two, three, four, and five. Oh, we're going to get another one. Okay. And we're going to do this one more time for this row. Put our stitch marker in. And do our last bird's foot spike. Again, from our stitch here, down one, back to the right two of them. Bring up a loop. Back to our stitch, down two. Bring up a loop. Gotta get enough slack on my yarn. And then back to the same stitch, down one and over two to the left. Down one, over two to the left. Bring up the loop. Yarn over through all four. And then you're gonna put your stitch your hook where your stitch 
Yep, one two step. Yep. <laughs> or it's like the a waltz or a foxtrot or Texas two step or the electric slide or something. Okay, and then you're going to go in and do our single crochet. And then you're going to do a single crochet in your next stitch. There'll be two two stitches here. The one we just did right after the bird's foot. And then one more into your turning chain. So when you get down the row, it's going to look like that. Let me zoom out a little. And now the next three rows with the same color yarn are all going to be single crochets like we did with the blue. Again, we're going to turn, chain one and turn, skip the first stitch, and do singles all the way across. And then I'll put a single in the turning chain at the end of the row. And you should have the same number that you start out with with your foundation chain. In my case, 30. It's a multiple of six. Two, three, four, five. and then we're going to do one in the turning chain the thing about this stitch is it's not reversible so that's the front that's the pretty side the back side is going to look like that so if you're going to use this you're not going to want it on anything that you work that you care about that's reversible because that's all of your uh when you're pulling up your loops through all the stitches that's that's the ugly side but that's the side. So we're going to do another two rows of our, our single crochet. Give me a minute. Get that in there the right way. Same thing. Skip the first stitch. Go in each of them. And at the end, go through your turning chain. And then I'm going to show you how to do... The next color change, because it's offset from what we just did with this cream color. To our turning chain. Come on. And then we're going to do one more row of singles. Again, skip the first stitch. Single in every stitch all the way down. And then when we get to that turning chain, we're going to change our color. Now remember, we did not cut our blue color. I'm going to show you this is a technique you can do with some stitches, with some rows. doesn't work for all of them. So you're not constantly cutting your yarn and weaving in a lot. You might have suggested this. I'm not certain. Okay. So now we're at our turning chain. We're going to do our stitch. This is our last row of cream, our last stitch. So we've gone in, pulled up a loop, two on the hook. We're going to drop the white. The blue is right here. We never cut our blue. So we're going to keep our cream tail at the bottom. And then with this stitch, 
This is possible if you have a denser stitch, like a single all like a single crochet stitch, of all but single crochet. Even though it's four rows below is where you change colors, you can bring up your blue here. You're gonna carry your blue up and then join and continue with your blue for your rows that you're gonna do. And then if you're gonna put a border on it, I'm doing this so I'm not constantly cutting all my yarn for my samples, but if you're doing a project and you're gonna do a border, you're gonna stitch over this anyway. So that's less tails to weave in. And I am all washed out. <laughs> so that's a technique that could be used depending on your stitch if you don't like weaving in tails. And you're gonna do a border. So we've joined our our second color, our first color again. I'm just gonna tighten it up. Chain one and flip. Now we're gonna do more. Um, I'm gonna get my yarn going in the right spot. And again, we're not cutting the cream because we're gonna use the cream again. So now to do our second color of our bird's foot, the bird's foot are not going to be lined on top of each other like our sample here. This was our first here and then our second ones are offset. So we're gonna skip our first stitch. And in the next, in the next five stitches, are all gonna get a single. You skipped one, you do five singles, and now you're gonna do the same bird's foot stitch. The only difference is you've moved it over a couple stitches. So it's all it's gonna be offset from your previous bird's foot stitch. So the second one over, I put in a stitch marker. This is something I I came up with to put the stitch marker in there. Because if not, sometimes it can be hidden. You're not going to find the right stitch. And the count is kind of important for things to line up. So again, the bird's foot stitch, we're focusing on this stitch here that we skipped. So this is the one we're going to focus on. Go down one row and two stitches to the right, so two stitches back. Down one, two back, put the hook in, draw up a loop, draw it up a little bit tall, back to our same stitch, go down two rows, go in, draw up a loop, and then that same stitch, down one row, and two stitches to the left. Draw up a loop. You have four on your hook, yarn over through all four. And then where that stitch marker is, put your hook into the, that stitch, remove the stitch marker, and finish the stitch to single crochet, and then do four more. And you're going to continue this pattern all the way along. So now this bird's foot is halfway between these two. So every other row is going to be alternating like this. I don't know how well that this one's showing up. You've got them here, and then the blue ones are offset, then the cream. Once you get the hang of that, that's the difficult part. That's what makes the stitch. It becomes pretty easy because it's all it is a single crochet. Again, your back is gonna be ugly, but for a pillow, for a blanket that you're not really gonna flip over, could work. I can kind of see this, if it's like in a cotton here as a bag, um, can even see this as 
in like a sweater or a shrug this stitch because not all but a lot of sweaters are, well sweaters usually are not reversible um and you can incorporate this just in one section let's say you're going to do a sweater or a shawl or a shrug and you do this for a couple rows and then the rest of it's something totally different. So this is like an accent stitch. It kind of looks like embroidery. It kind of looks like you got your fabric and then you did embroidery stitches brought up and just in those spots. Does it make sense? I'm gonna finish this row just so we can see what a, I'm actually gonna finish this row and then the rest of the singles for it. So we can kinda of see what it really looks, really looks like. So again, we're gonna go down one and back two, bring up the loop, back to that stitch, down two, bring up a loop, back to that stitch, down one and over two to the left. And then bring up our loop, Yarn over through all four, and then put our hook in where that stitch marker is, so we get the right stitch, and then do finish the stitch, and then do four more singles. Again, we're ready to do another one, so I'm going to put my marker in. Walk it through one more time. Let me zoom in. So this is the stitch we're going to focus on. Down one row, back two, to the right. Go in, bring up a loop, two on the hook. Back to that stitch, go down two rows. Bring up a loop, and then back to the same stitch, down one, and two to the left. And then yarn over through all four, and then put our stitch, our hook, into where our stitch marker is. Remove our stitch marker, and finish our stitch. That's one, two, three four, and number five. Yeah, it definitely has a look of embroidery. And welcome, Lady1241. How are you? It definitely has that hand embroidery look to it. And my opinion is, I think it looks better in the cotton yarn than it does in the acrylic. I picked similar colors, but I think the yarn, and that this happens with a lot of stitches, the yarn you choose sometimes is better for other stitches. Sometimes it'll make the stitches pop. Just because how the fibers are, just the nature of it. So again, we're going to put our hook, not our hook, our stitch marker in the spot. That's just so we know where to go after we do our bird's foot stitch. Again, this is the stitch we're center, you're focused on, down one row and back two to the left, I mean two to the right, bring up the loop, back to our stitch, down two, bring up the loop, and then back to our stitch, down one and two to the left. And then yarn over through all four. And now we're going to put our hook into where our stitch marker is. Remove that. And then do five, two, three, four, five to the end. But then we still have to go into our turning chain, which is right there. 
And you see how the cream had five of those and the blue only had four. It would help if I zoom out. And now the rest of it, the next three rows are single crochets. But again, you skip the first stitch, do one in each, and then you do one in the turning chain. I'm going to do that real quick just so we have an idea of what it's going to look like. That was the second row. We're going to do two more. I'm trying to do this without tangling everything because, again, I haven't cut my cream yarn. I'm only going to do one row of this. We can imagine one additional row after this. I don't think I need to do. all of it. A couple more stitches. And there. Just imagine one more row of the blue, but you see how they pop. And yes, you could do this all in one color. It'd be difficult to see where you're going. It looks better when you do contrasting colors. And again, your back's going to be ugly. And even the back looks like it's the backs of some embroidery because when you do certain stitches you will have you'll care you'll travel your yarn will travel on the back side when you do embroidery okay let me get more of my drink I'm gonna move that out of the way I think we might use some yellow here because I am going to show. Carjo's not here yet for the meme, but we will transition. I like I had said the other night. I will show all this week how to do granny squares. A real intro, basic starting granny squares, and let me know if the yellow here is going to show up. Hopefully it will because it's a contrast. And again, I'm using the, the cotton yarn. I think the stitches show up a little bit better. So those of you who are new to granny squares, and let me get my granny square. I have it here somewhere. Where's my sample? Not the one I want. The white one. I want the white one. Here we go. That's a granny. Basic, simple granny. So if anybody's crocheting along for the granny square, let me know. Again, this is just a refresher or um an intro. It's not this is not a scheduled stitch. 
So I'm going to show you what I did la the other night. The chain into the chain ring. Then after you do after I do that, I'm going to show you the magic ring. So you do a slip stitch on your hook, and you're going to chain four. So you've chained four. And I hope this is showing up well enough. So we chain four, and then in our very first chain we made, you're going to insert your hook and do a slip stitch to join. And that will form our ring. Once we formed our ring, we're going to chain three. That is going to be, counts as a double crochet. And then we're going to do two more double crochets into this ring. So we're going to insert the hook into the ring. And the other thing I'm going to, I, sh I will tell you to do, your tail here, put your tail along with the ring. So the ring is here by my, between my thumbs and the tail is here. Put it along with it. Treat it like it's the ring. And then you're going to do two double crochets into the ring. And the whole time you're doing that, you're stitching over your tail. So that's going to be less, less to weave in. So we have our three double crochets because our chain three counts as one. Chain two. And then in that same ring, you're going to do three double crochets. Again, we're always going to be stitching over this tail. So just think of it as part of that center ring. So do our three doubles. And then we're going to chain two. And then repeat that process. Three doubles. Chain two. And we're going to do that one more time. Three doubles. And all of our doubles are going into our center ring. And now we're going to chain two. And we're going to slip stitch to the top of our first double crochet, which is actually three chains. So in the very top chain right here, we're going to slip stitch to join. And we've got our little granny square. Again, to repeat what I did the other night, we're going to slip stitch to the corner. So we're going to go into the very next stitch, slip stitch, the next stitch, slip stitch, and in the corner space, slip stitch. Now we can do our chain three. That counts as a double. And in this same hole, the same corner, yep, teeny tiny granny. In that same corner space right here, we're going to do two doubles. And then what I always do is I take those doubles and I move them over because they're just crocheted around that corner. And now we're going to do two chains. And in that same corner space, do three doubles. Again, this is the basic, ordinary, run-of-the-mill granny square. There are tons of variations but this is the basic beginner one. So we've got a group of three doubles, two chains and three doubles all in the corner space. That might help a little better with the glare. After we've done a corner, this the, that grouping we just did is a corner. After the corner, I chained one. Some people don't chain, but I chained one. And now we could do another corner and the corner again, in the next corner, is three doubles. Get enough slack off my yarn. 
two and number three. Move it over, chain two, and in that same space, do three more doubles. We've made our second corner. After we do a corner, we're going to do a chain one, chain one space that we're going to be creating here or for the sides. And in the next corner, do three doubles. And then we're going to do two chains and then three doubles. Then our three corners. Do this one more time. We're going to chain one. And in our last corner space, three doubles, chain two, because you're on a corner, you're going to chain two. You need that extra room on the corners to make the corner. If not, you're not going to really have a good square. And then in that same corner space, do five, not five, three more double crochets. After that, do one more chain, because that's the side here, and then slip stitch to the very first stitch. And it's, it's actually a chain, because when we start a row, we chain up three. So in the top of that, slip stitch. And then to do it bigger, you do the exact same thing. You're going to slip stitch to the corner, do your three chains, do your two doubles, your two chains, and three doubles to form your corner section. And then afterwards, you're going to do a chain. And then in this space here on this side, you'll do three doubles, a chain, and three doubles. Does that kind of make sense? Anytime we get a bigger square. This has three, this is three rounds. So there's one round here, two rounds, and the third round. The easiest way to find it, to count it, is if you find your center hole and you count this cluster or this grouping is one round, that one's two, that one's three. If I was going to do more to this, I'd start in a corner, do my corner, which the corners are always the same on a basic, three doubles two chains, three doubles, then we do a chain after that, then in this space here, do three doubles, we'll do a chain, and in this space, do three doubles, and do a chain, and do the corner. If you got a really, really big blanket, you're just going to have more three doubles in a space, chain, three doubles in a space, chain, and so on, until you get to the corner. Now I'm going to show you the magic ring. And the, the only difference between what I'm going to show you now and this is how you start. The rest of it is the same. And you could use a magic ring. You could, you could use a magic ring or the chain ring. That's what's here for anything that has to go into a round, meaning a square, a circle, a hexagon, an octagon, a triangle, anything where you can't, you go around and around and around instead of rows back and forth, anything where you just, you're constantly rotating and you're not flipping. Even though some granny squares you flip. Essentially anything where you start in the center and work your way out. So we're gonna do the magic circle. And if anybody wants to practice with this, let me know and I can go real slow because this takes some getting used to. The reason why you would want to use a magic ring is not necessarily in this because this, this type of granny square, you've got all these holes and it makes sense to have an open hole. But if you ever make a square or a circle where you don't want to have a hole in the center, if you want it cinched up tight, a magic ring is great. 
So your magic ring, the way you start, you're going to put your, your yarn in your hand, the tail facing towards you. Wrap the yarn around your fingers twice. and Not twice. Wrap your yarn around your two fingers. Cross it. Form an X. Put your thumb there to hold the X. Rotate your hand. Bringing this... Bringing the yarn down. Put it between your middle finger and your ring finger. And you have two strands. Take your hook. Go under your first strand and over your second. So again, under this strand and over it, and I got my hook down, grabbing it, and I'm going to pull it like that, and I'm going to rotate my hook up. So let's do that one more time. Hook is down. Hook is facing the table. Under the first, over the second, bring it, pull it forward, and rotate the hook so the hook is facing upwards. I don't know if you could see. It's kind of shiny. But the hook is facing up. And you can pull that up a little bit. And then carefully remove your fingers. Don't lose your loop. And my yarn's a little wavy, so it's not really going to show that well. You, what you can also do... If you hold it out like this, it's okay to make this loop as big as you, as you want. Make, once you have it like in this orientation, chain one to lock it. So that will kind of help keep it in place. So there's your ring. Now, the key thing is you've got a ring and you've got a tail. This is your tail. Keep your tail right there. This part of the ring here has got two strands. It's the ring and the tail. So we're going to start by stitching over this section here. So we've chained one. I'm going to chain two more. That's going to count as a double crochet. I'm going to do two more into this big ring. This big, large ring. I'm going to do... Oh, I just lost it. I'm going to do two more into that. So there's our two. Now we're going to do our two chains. And in this same big ring, do our three doubles. Three doubles and two chains. So right now we've got two sides. And we're going to do, so we did our two chains. Now we're going to do three doubles still in that large ring. It's just like the yellow one we just did. It's just there's a bigger spot to go. It's two. And that's three. And we're going to chain two. And then we're going to do three more into this big ring here, this big mess. It looks like a mess, but it's it'll it'll all work out when we get to the end here. It's two, and then that's three. So we've got a group of three, a group of three, a group of three, and another group of three. If we want to make a hexagon, we can keep going, or whatever shape we want. We're just going to do a square. So we've got our our four groups of three, and we've got our two. We got our three chain spaces. One, two, three. We need one more chain space. So we need two chains. And then we're going to... All this... This part here, forget about this right now. So move that to the back. And now we're going to slip stitch into the very first double crochet that we made here, which was actually those three chains. Slip stitch to join. And that looks like a hot mess. But what we're going to end up doing is we've slip stitch to join. We're going to pull our hook out, make a loop really big. Don't worry about that loop. Now we're going to take what we made and flip it over. 
We're going to hold our work. This large loop is what the hook was in. So we're going to put that with our working yarn, put it to the side. Forget that it's there. So we've got our work. We've got a large hole here. We've got this strand and we got our tail. We want to find this tail. And while holding your square firmly, you're going to pull your tail. And you're going to pull, and you're going to pull, and you're going to pull, and you're going to keep pulling. No, don't pull so hard that it breaks. But you're going to pull your tail. Not only has that, all of those have stitched over your tail, because when you were making them, you were stitching over this. Hey, Crojo. And then when you flip it over, you don't have a hole in the center of your square. I'm like, I'm losing, I'm getting a lot of glare on it. And that's, a, I need a better camera. So that's how you get a closed center. I mean, it's not completely closed because they're, it stitches, but I'll even put my pointer through it and I'm pushing really hard to get it through because it's been cinched up. It's a, basically a drawstring. So I made the hole bigger, as you can see there. And if I pull this, it's gotten a little smaller. And then you can leave that tail or now you can kind of weave it in a little more. It's really secure in there. Weave it and then trim it. And then you've got a close, a close center. Doesn't really always work if you're doing this type of granny square. Again, it's got an open lacy look to it, so it makes sense to have an open lacy center. But if you're doing certain circles or certain squares where it's not as open, like if you're doing, um, where's the one? Where's my square? See where I put it. That's not the one. Y'all got to move it here somewhere. Okay, for instance, the sunflower one that I did the other week, it's got an open center. If I wanted, I could have done a magic circle, and that center could have been tightened. And it would have looked a little more like a sunflower. Sunflowers don't have a hole all the way through them in the center. Those are all done. Now, like this floral one, there's some open lacy spots to it. Like here between the pinks. So it might make sense to have an open hole. It all, all comes down to, to your preference and what you're looking for. How are you, Crow Joe? My allergies are acting up. I've been sneezing like crazy all day. Ugh. Um, Crojo, do we have a meme? If not, that's okay. We don't have to have a meme tonight. I'll check something here. Alrighty. I'm trying to find something else to do for tonight. I could make, that's what I'm going to end up doing. I will get out my, move my squares. I'm good. Just got back from baseball. No hooking tonight. Just chilling. Okay. That's fine. Got to. Deal with my mess that I have to the left of me. All 
I'm going to find some yarn. I'm just going to grab a ball. I don't like that one. That's kind of dark. Dropped it. What the heck? We'll use this, even though it's not the most attractive yarn in the world. But it will work. Really clean that up. Okay, give me a second, and I will get the meme and wrap up that yarn. So let's go to the meme. So I heard you crochet. Can you make me a... No. <laughs> Actually... That's not always true. I will make something if they are a close friend or family member and it is something that I enjoy making or they're paying me and they understand the time and effort that goes into it and understands the price that I would charge them. <laughs> and the person would appreciate it, yes. <laughs> but for the most part, no. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Crojo, for the meme, as usual. I need to... um. Let me do this real quick. I think we might have gotten that one already. I'm saving them to put onto the Discord. I am trying to keep updated with that. Okay, that's saved. Okay, again, I'm gonna recap like I had mentioned at the beginning of my stream. So it's going to be a busy week this week, not stream-wise. Here on Twitch, the stream schedule is the same. Again, obviously here we're here tonight. Thursday night at 8, as usual, we are going to be doing our last animal stitch. Don't know when I'll be on tomorrow. More but That's fine. That's fine. All tomorrow is is not going to be here on Twitch tomorrow. I'll explain that in a second. So Thursday is our last animal-themed stitch of the month. We are doing, and I will give you a sneak preview of Thursday's stream. This is a very, very popular stitch in the past couple years. There have been many projects I've seen made with this. It looks complicated. It's really easy. And I don't know how well it's going to show up on my black background here. But on Thursday, we're doing the crocodile stitch. And that's not really showing up that well. And that's not really... I'm going to do a thing that I know I shouldn't do is I'm going to put the white paper underneath of it. And that's not helping either. It doesn't come across on camera that well. Um, yeah, that's going to be for Thursday. It looks complicated. It's super, super easy. When you ruined it a little, we could s ruined it when I ruined it. Oh, turned it a little. You can kind of see. Yeah, it's because I did it, did it in the green. This was just a test. When I do it on Thursday, I will use a light color yarn. I'll probably use the yellow or the white. Um, if you Google crocodile crochet stitch, there's patterns all over the place. 
I've seen it done in glo sleep, uh, uh, fingerless gloves. There's like, um, I guess you would call them like a sleeping bag, but they look like a mermaid tail doing that stitch. There's purses, blankets. There's all different things with it. It is a thick stitch, and it is a yarn eater. So keep that in mind. But that will be on Thursday. Also here on Twitch, Saturday night, we're doing um, an edging stream where we're going to do four different edge stitches because we had done that the other, the other month. So I found four more that we're gonna, I'm going to show on how to edge and bo do borders and whatever. The other thing we're doing this week, and I had mentioned it earlier, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Discord... We're having a viewing a YouTube viewing party. Again, if anybody has issues and needs help with it, at around eight or so, when you join, I can help you walk through it. It's real easy. You just click on the video voice hangout channel in the Discord. You don't have to have your camera and microphone on. There is a chat feature that are, there's a thing you have to click for the chat to come up. You could type in the chat like we have here. And then the other thing is, I will be on camera. The other thing, the one I start the video share, when I start it, everybody will click on it. It'll say something about click to see video or something. You are going to see the YouTube video or whatever I'm showing on my screen at the same time. So think of it as everybody sitting together getting together in person, watching a video. Again, these videos, I'm showing these because I can't show them here on Twitch, and I am not skilled enough, or it's, it's something I do not... It's not a craft or a skill that I do personally, but it is related to yarn. So the one that we're doing tomorrow night is about a half-hour video about shearing sheep and alpaca and I'm when we meet tomorrow I'll give a little brief overview about what the channel is about that I'm going to show and then on Friday at 8 Eastern um again on discord we're going to do I think there's two shorter videos about skirting and scouring a fleece and then we're going to do more of these video, viewing um, viewings on Discord next Monday and next Wednesday, and it's more the whole process of how the fiber goes from the animal to yarn before you get it to crochet with it or to knit or to weave or whatever you're going to do with it. So it's kind of like a the whole, the whole journey it takes. So it's going to be over the course of a couple nights. Also, those of you who are going to any festivals, because this is the time of year where the sheep and alpaca and some goats or whatever are sheared. Okay, I'll catch you later, Klimiko. This is the time of year where they are sheared and... If you're going to any festivals that are happening this time of year, most likely you'll probably see some of this, what I'm going to show on these YouTube videos, you'll probably see in person if you happen to attend any of these uh, sheep and wool festivals. And that, that is for people in the Northern Hemisphere, because the Northern Hemisphere, we are in spring going into summer. So obviously you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're not sharing the animals now. Sharing yours on Memorial Day weekend. Yep. And it all depends on where you are and the weather and everything. And because actually the one we're gonna we're gonna watch tomorrow night, it's a small hobby farm in Manitoba, Canada, and they don't share theirs until mid to late June. But again, it gets warmer later there. Because they're in a more of a nor northern latitude. 
So I'm just going to make some granny squares here. No franking grannies. These granny squares that I am making here tonight are going to end up being included in a local, I'm going to call it a crochet bee. That's what I'm going to call it. Where we're all, a group of us, we're going to make granny squares roughly the same size. And when we all get a bunch made, we're all going to get together and mix them all up, whatever we make, and then join them together and make a blanket and then donate that blanket. Most likely to Project Linus, maybe if there's another charity, whatever we can find. Whatever, whatever scrap, okay, the rules are, and this, again, Carjo is part of the, uh, the B. Whatever scraps you have, whatever colors you have, the stipulations for it, it's got to be approximately five inches square. Got to be acrylic. And that's pretty much it. If somebody makes a square that's bigger, I can understand if there's going to be a couple like 10 inch squares. Because if we do a 10 inch square, if we wanted to have a 10 inch square, we could put two 5 inch on each side. Yes, worst. Thank you, Citric for Blue. Worsted weight. Yes, worsted weight acrylic. Nothing. We don't want any expensive stuff because, again, this is going to go to a charity. They're not going to want anything that's got a special uh, care, laundry and care involved with it. And I, uh, if anybody locally to wherever you are, if you've got a group that crochets or even knits and want to do this same thing, it's a really good idea. Additionally, and this is something, if somebody wants to do this, it's just an idea that somebody had the other night. If they feel comfortable with it, if they want to make a bunch and they don't have anybody close to them or they don't want to join it themselves, if they want, they can ship it to me and then include it in our blanket and then we can um, donate it. Again, that's just an idea somebody had. I'm not saying that you guys have to, obviously. Yes, acrylic, so there's no allergies to animal fibers, and also it's easy to take care of. Because though it can be machine washed and good to go. 100% acrylic, we don't want any blends. So it's a good way to use up your scraps. And it'll be scrappy, colorful. So whatever you got. And again, like I said, I guess you could use polyester if it's a size four. As long as it's a hundred percent. I say acrylic because most big box store value brand, I guess we're going to call it yarns, are acrylic. We don't want cotton. We don't want 
the main reason we don't want cotton is because if you mix cotton with acrylic or any other things and you go to, they go to launder it, there is a chance of it shrinking and being totally dist distorted in shape. Because I think they do t accept cotton, but I personally would just feel better just doing acrylic. And again, worsted weight, size 4 yarn. Whatever hook you use, it does not matter. Whatever hook, as long as the finished square is approximately 5 inches square. Or... If anybody wants to, they could do some 10 inch squares because it will still be able to be pieced together. We want it to be rectangular. I've seen some people will do random size squares and piece them together and the edges are all kind of uneven, like blocky looking. I think it would look better if it's all actual rectangle straight sides. And I figure uh, whoever's doing this, just um, re probably relaxed. You don't want it to be super tight where it's going to be totally distorted. I mean, it's crochet, so it's gonna it's gonna give a little bit here and there, but approximate. It doesn't have to be exactly five. If it's like just under five or just over five, it's fine. I mean, even if it's, um, no, well, actually, let me show you one of, let me see here. Okay. Any granny square you want. It could be a basic granny square. It could be any of the granny squares we did on granny week. It could be a sunflower one. This has a border, but this is more than five inches, I think. Yeah, this is five and a half inches. But let's say this would be slightly too big. I mean, yeah, that would be a little bit too big. Let's, but measuring the lax, yes, in the relaxed dimension, yeah. Because when we stitch it together, it's going to, some are going to give more than others because everybody's aren't going to be identical. Even all of mine are not going to be identical to the ones I make. But if you want a border, let's say your square is about four and a half. You can always do an extra round of single crochet or whatever it is to make it closest, closest to five. It could be whatever you want. It could be flowers. It could be... Where's that one I have over here? Where's that the cool one that I like? It could be that. Any square. It could be that. It could be one of these if it's five by five. Where is that one that I wrote? Here it is. They don't have to be grannies. They could be five inch square, just regular rows. I'm not certain, certain if there's going to be a border. Once we get to that point, then we can decide if there's going to be a border. You could do one of these. This is the um, birds of a feather that I did the other week. And you can make this whatever size you want. And let's just see here. Okay, let's... Okay, if I do one row less, it's going to be four and a half. So let's say it's, if I take one round off, and then just do a, a, whatever row all the way around to make it up to about five. So it doesn't have to be this, ex you could take the basic pattern, whatever granny, and then just add whatever stitch all the way around to get as close to five inches as possible. And then, like I said, once we get them all together, anybody here locally to me, we all can get together and 
literally all of us sit around, crochet, join them all together, depending on how many we have. If we have a whole lot, everybody makes their own blanket. Or if there isn't a ton of them, we all do a section and then join all of those sections together to make one big blanket. And this, again, this is to use up your scraps. And again, you can always, I know it's going to take a while to sit there, sit around in person, if you know me personally, um, to sit around and join them all. So obviously, I don't expect to people to sit around for hours on end doing it, but they can always take a bunch home. So you'll have some of mine and some of hers and some of theirs. They all mix together and then join them however you want to join them. As long as the joins are the same width. Because some joins can be wider or narrower than others. So we'll have to figure that out when we get to that point for the join. And then, um, so I'm at four inches there. Maybe I can go around one more time. Wow, I am not in charge of alcohol. <laughs> I'm the one who came up with this idea the other week. <laughs> but also, again, anybody locally, wherever you are, I encourage you to do... Um, a similar type thing. And in your own little personal group, wherever you are locally, if you want to, you decide to change the size. If you want to do four inch squares or six inch squares or whatever. I just chose five because that's it's a basic standard measurement, a standard size, meaning five and then double that's 10. So if, if you do a 10 inch square, two fives can go to it. So it's, it's not some weird number like seven and your numbers are going to be weird. I just kind of just picked a basic common number. No, there's nothing wrong with seven. I'm just saying it's not a... I don't know what the word is for it. I mean, you locally, if somebody wants to do it all based on seven, they can do seven inch squares. So five is odd also. <laughs> Again, it doesn't have to be exactly five as long as it's close to it. In fact, I need to do, when I get around to this other side, I need to do a little measurement to make certain that this isn't going to be way too big. And if it is, then I'll have to come up with something to do on this row. Instead of a row of regular grannies, I might just do single crochets. I dropped the stitch. Yeah, I could do that. I could do half double crochets. Once I get around to the other side, I'm going to measure it just to get an idea. Do one more little grouping and then I'll measure. Okay. We are right on five inches. Again, if you're off by like an eighth of an inch, maybe even a quarter of an inch, 
you're fine. This isn't going to be entered in any judge show. It's to provide warmth to a child. So... Just kind of, int dang it, I forgot to measure that corner-to-corner -corner swatch tomorrow. Real excited if you could pull off the corner-to-corner. -corner. Yes, definitely. Um, she wants me to plan a pattern for a corner-to-corner -corner graph again, but with text. Doing that's easy. The hard part is you stitching it up because of changing the color so often and the bobbins and everything to keep track of and because there's a lot of color changing because you really can't travel your yarn. You got to pick up a, let's say you got your gray here and you're doing your gray and then you switch to blue for a, blo a block or two. Then you can pick up the gray, but it's a different bobbin of gray. It's not the bobbin you were working from. It's a second one. And then you keep going, and then you do some more black, which is a different, uh, some blue, which is a different bobbin from what you just did. Get that done, and then you got to do gray again, which is different from the first two bobbins. It's the third one. There's a lot involved in that. So um, I would recommend doing a, a basic practice one, and I can, if it's only one tile, yes, yeah, if it's only one tile, but you're going to get to parts of it, even with all the, the, the lettering and everything, you might not want to. I'll make you up a very basic, um, very small, graph with like a basic letter, there's one letter in it and it can only, it'll probably be like 10 squares, corner to corner squares by 10. So it's a small little thing and have you practice with that because um, it can get a little confusing. Okay. Now I'm just going to flip my yarn, pull it out, five or ten practice letters for the blanket. Actually, you know, you, you could probably do that if you could do, that would probably be cool possibly do a corner to corner square like this as long as it's about five or ten inches and incorporate it with this that'll be kind of cool it's kind of like a sampler you'd have a granny square and a corner to corner and then rows back and forth yeah yeah um Weeks, this is back in February, when I did this sample here on the stream, and mine is not the best. For, this is corner to corner. And when I did this, I started with the white, went back and forth, back and forth. And when I got here, I had a bobbin. For the group blanket, or, yeah. I was saying for the group blanket, do... Possibly doing a corner to corner as long as it's in the, the size requirement. But for your blanket, for your project that you want, I'm going to do a sample little little graph, print up a, a sample graph for you to practice on. Kind of like this size. This is about 11 by 12, roughly this size. So when I, again, when I was doing this, this is a very simple, basic thing. It's not a letter, so you're not going to have a hole in it, like a letter A. It's going to have a different color. Like if this had a, a, a center part here that was white, that would be like a letter. 
This here is simple. So I just went back and forth with my white and then I continued up here. But when I was doing this, I did the white and then I stopped. And then I did my red and then picked up another separate bobbin of white. So I had white here and white here, two separate ones. So when I got done this, I switched over to the red, switched over to this white. It's gonna be the same thing with your letters, but there's a possibility you might be having multiple bobbins, more than just two white. You might have a whole lot more bobbins for all your colors. Even though you have three, only three colors, you might have probably have multiples of all of them. The samples for the project could be donated. Yes. That, that's something I'm going to probably look into. I might even do that. It's a good idea, um, Citric for Blue. Let me just double check something. Let me see how big my squares are. If not, I can always change the size of hook. Okay, my corner to corner squares are not quite an inch. They're like roughly an inch that way and they're a little less than an inch that way. So I can always go up a size hook and then each square will be an inch so I can do like five by five and then possibly, possibly do a letter and each one would be a letter. That would be a cool, um, like an alphabet blanket for, for a kid. We'll see. <laughs> one, two, three, that's four rounds. Let's see here. Let me do another one. Again, trying to use up some of the scrap. I've That's all I have of this color was that square and then this much more. It's not really enough to do a project. It's not really the my favorite color yarn, but this could go with other stuff. And so it doesn't get trashed or sit at the bottom of my bin for years like it has been. Put some use to it. Whoops. Trying, I need to get in the habit and I'm not, I need to get in the habit of stitching over my tail. So it's less to weave in especially if I'm going to have all of these squares. On the letters, after the blanket is done, I could sort of go back and out like the letters on top. You mean like um, with yarn and a needle, like embroider, like backstitch or something around them? You could do that. Oh, also, to remind everybody, our needle felt on top of it. I don't know how to needle felt. I've always uh, been interested in that. Background is royal blue, and the letters are black. Go back after done and outline the black letters with white. Yeah, you could do that. I've never done any needle felting before. That might be something in the future that we can um, do on a Discord viewing party one night. I just want to kind of like expose everybody to other types of fiber or whatever crafts, even if I don't do them myself. 
No, no, needle felting is not always scratchy. Needle felting can be very, very soft. But like I was saying, um, coming up on May 7th is when, as a reminder, I'm doing my marathon stream. That is a Sunday, Sunday, May 7th. Actually, let me back up a day. Saturday, May 6th, I'm going to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. The, oh, welcome back, Crojo. On the 6th, I'm going to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. There will be no stream Saturday night, meaning of the 6th. This coming Saturday, there's a stream. But the following Saturday, on the 6th, there will be no stream. But on Sunday the 7th is my marathon stream starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. I don't expect everybody to be there all day long. I don't know how long it's going to last. There will be no temperature blanket that day. It's all going to be a blanket that I'm going to start and, fingers crossed, finish on stream that will be donated to Project Linus. I've got the pattern picked out. I've got the yarn picked out. I've done a small swatch. I need to do a little bit bigger swatch. My goal is start at 10 and maybe, how big is it going to be? I'm thinking the yarn I have, it might be a little bit bigger than a baby blanket. Maybe like a, a toddler size blanket, maybe. Just trying to calculate, because I got a bunch of yarn, but I got a, it's a thinner weight yarn. It's a size, it's a, it's a weight of three. I think it's a three weight. Um, I'm going to make it super, be, be wide enough, because I know they have dimensions. I think it's like 30 by 30 is the smallest they take. I think I'm going to. I still have to decide how wide I'm going to make it. Yeah, but with this yarn, and I can actually show you what the yarn looks like. I've had it for a while, and I don't have any of the labels left. This is the yarn, and it's got a natural, it's, it's acrylic. But it's got like a crimp to it, a natural crimp, and it's it was salt. I don't think I don't remember the brand. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Veritas Victoria, Veriset Victoria. Um, it's not going to be a short marathon. It's again, I don't know the the brand of this. I don't know if they. I don't think they sell it anymore. I used got this at Michael's years ago. I know they don't care. Then Michaels doesn't care it anymore, and I can't remember if what brand it was. It was not a Red Heart brand. It might have been a Lion brand. Anyway, got a plenty of it in this light blue color, but I am using for it. I'm going to use a four and a half millimeter hook. What I normally use on stream for my regular worsted weight yarn, I use the five and a half. So I'm going down a millimeter. I'll hold this double. No, I'm not going to stitch it double. I'm not going to stitch two strands together because I don't want it to be that thick. But this is my little sample here of what I'm going to be, of the blanket that I found, the pattern that I found. And it's probably not showing up on camera that well. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, it's got some bobbles and this special stitch, which 
I'm going to, at some point, show the stitch. I don't know the name of the stitch, what, the, what they call it. But, um, it's got, like, there, there's going to be a texture to it. But I'm going to use a smaller hook, so it might take me a little while. And this yarn does snag a little. So it's not going to be a super fast workup on it. So it's not going to be a uh, short stream. My goal that I'm kind of thinking with breaks going from 10 a.m. and this is ambitious of me to about 10 p.m. That stream, I don't know if that's going to be uploaded onto YouTube. Not because of the, the length of it, but I am trying to figure out how to play music on my stream. I know there's a way to do it with Twitch-approved music that I can play here through... I forgot what, they, what the setting is here on Twitch. There's a service or whatever. That's through Twitch. Um, but if I would take that with that music and just upload the stream to YouTube, it could be copyrighted, striked, even though it's Twitch approved, Twitch approved music. I've tried to figure there are ways to do it where you can upload it without them. The music audio, which I'm not really certain how to do it. I've tried to download some programs to do it and I can't get it to work. Um, so it's a possibility I'm trying to get, get it so I can play music during, especially during that stream. Cause I don't think I can talk for 12 hours straight, I barely talk for two hours straight, which we've come, we're coming up on two hours now. Also, on that marathon stream, I will be uh, filling in everybody on the festival that I will be going to the day before. So I'll have some of that to talk about. And they better have funnel cake. <laughs> I know I'm going to a yarn festival, a sheep and wool festival, but I really want funnel cake. <laughs> Night all three eights, <laughs> three eights. Yeah, your eyes are closing. How did you type three eights? <laughs> yeah, when I get done this square, I think I'm gonna call it a night. Also, it's been like I said, two hours. Good night, Crow Joe. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, when I finish this round will be the last row for this square. Surprisingly, this yarn is very soft. Too bad it's not really the best color. I, mean, I like creams and browns, but this looks like It'll look good with other stuff with it. Um, I don't dye yarn, and I don't think I doubt if that would work because this is a hundred. This is a commercial acrylic, and acrylic doesn't take dye that well because it's acrylic. I mean, you can do it, but it's not. Um, Not like wool or cotton. Oh, there is? Oh. Yeah, I don't want to get into dyeing and all of that. That's just not my thing. And I know there's a mess. And I know the other week when you were spinning, you were, it was a blend. Oh, what was it again? You were spinning. It was alpaca and 
two other, like two types of wool and you dyed it and your hand, I remember your hands were like this bluish green. It was a pretty color. <laughs> I popped in your stream that night. I might have even rated you or whatever. And you were doing, yeah, I don't. I I appreciate those that dye um, wool and yarn like you do. But I think I'm going to stick dye error. That's the only one that had transferred. It was still a pretty color. Smurf-like, yes. <laughs> that reminds me, I need to, um, the YouTuber that I need to link to, um, my Discord and the YouTubers to watch, um, channel. I don't know if you're familiar, Citric for Blue, if you're familiar with, um, On YouTube, Rebecca from Chemnitz. Chemnitz. She does a whole bunch of different videos where she's uh, dying different things, different different experiments. I really like watching her uh, her channel. Okay, I don't think I have enough to do a square in this, and we finished that one. You're not familiar with her. Ah. Yeah, she does a lot of all different types of dyeing of yarn, either the yarn itself or a knit blank. She gets a lot of knit blanks or knit of wool knit from knit picks, and she does different techniques with commercial dyes that are meant for dyeing yarn. And then she does other things. She's done like with Kool Aid, and she's done it with um, the Easter egg kits. To dyeing eggs with, f with actual food coloring. It's pretty much all food coloring. And she does this whole, it's a lot of science behind it. So I find that kind of interesting. It's just not something that um, I don't think I would ever get into. The spinning, yes. The dyeing, not so much. Um, Let me be here. Okay, nobody I follow is streaming at the moment well i will definitely have to link her youtube channel into the discord so if you like knitting and crocheting and yarn art and science that would be a really good channel and it yeah i don't have not for not in stitches. I don't have, and I'm not certain how to do that command. I'm relatively new at some of this stuff. Oh, the Discord, it popped up there. Um, The link for the Discord popped up there. And that's an automatic thing just that goes on throughout my uh, stream. Let's see. Wow, Citric for Blue. That is, is that... Was that the yarn that you were dyeing and, and, and spinning that night? That is a really pretty color. I really like that color. Grammy would like that color. She likes those blues and those teal type colors. Very, very pretty. Okay, I'm going to see if we have anybody that we can raid real quick. None of the people, well, there's people that I follow, they're streaming, but they're playing video games at the moment. Uh, oh, somebody's spinning. We might go and check them out. Yeah, Citric for Blue would probably be a better person to ask about how to measure out what yardage. <laughs> yeah, we're going to pop in. Let 
there. All right, so I think we're going to raid somebody they're spinning at the moment. Um, I will be on, okay, I'll be on stream, on Twitch, Thursday night for the Crocodile Stitch. But again, to remind everybody, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern in the Discord, in the Video Voice Hangout channel, I will be showing a video on from YouTube of shearing alpaca and some sheep. So we kind of get an idea of how all of that is uh, done. And again, throughout the week, this week and next week, on non-Twitch days, we'll be doing some Discord video watching. Yes, crocodiles. I, sh I don't know if you were here earlier, lady, when I was showing it. It didn't really show up that well because of the color. But the crocodile stitch, it, it looks better in person than it does on cam. But... It looks complicated, but it's super, super easy. It's a two row repeat. There's the back side. That's the front side. It's a yarn eater. It's a thick, thick fabric. So again, thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. Um, I will see, maybe I'll see you tomorrow night in the Discord. If not, I will hopefully see you Thursday night here on Twitch. And we are going to go raid Mare Mary Fiber Arts. They are spinning at the moment. And... Everybody have a good evening. And happy crafting!